Hey there, it's Joseph from RoboFlow. Today, we're gonna to be talking about what is pre-processing, okay? So when you build a computer vision model and when you deploy that model, you go through a series of steps, right? First things first, you collect your data, you organize and label it, you pre-process those images, you augment that data, you train a model, you then deploy that model and you display its results. So the, these seven steps kind of take you end to end. We're gonna zoom in on what is image pre-processing, why does it matter so much, and what sorts of image pre-processing steps should you apply to build better computer vision models? Okay, so first things first, image pre-processing are the steps you take to convert an image in its raw form into a form that your model is ready to use for training and inference. So you know when you collect images, they might be of various sizes, they might be of different contrast levels, they might be oriented and wrong in different ways. Image preprocessing are all the rules-based, largely deterministic steps that you take to make sure your images are all formatted correctly. It's the data cleaning of computer vision. Okay, and so when you get to image preprocessing, there's a series of different steps that you can take. I'm gonna talk through a few of those steps. So the data set that I have is a data of chess pieces. Uh, so my individual images here are uh, chess pieces on a chess board and you can see them, uh, they're like labeled like this. And you can see each of those pieces are uh, called out and, and labeled. Now, some things that I notice about my chess pieces uh, images is that they're actually quite large. Um, so the median image size in my data set is 2,284 pixels by 1,529 pixels. Uh, and so I know that I'm going to have to do a resize decision because that's probably too big for most models that I'm going to use. Remember, large images increase training time and increase therefore model inference time. Some other things I notice is that my images are not square. Uh, the aspect ratio of them uh, is a little bit off from square. Any neural network that has fully connected layers, I need to have a square image. So what I'm trying to say here is I know that one of the pre-processing steps I'm going to need to apply to my images is a resize. Now, there's a series of other steps I might want to apply. We're gonna talk through each of these at a high level and how you might use them. So there's auto-orient, static crop, resize, grayscale, auto-adjusted contrast, tiling, modifying classes, and filter null. Okay, so first things first, resize. Resize is where you take an image in its input size and then you resize it. That is, change the dimensions of the image such that your model's able to use it. Now. One size doesn't fit all as it relates to resize. In other words, there's a lot of different ways you could resize an image. You could stretch it so that the image gets stretched to the uh, dimensions, as is the example here. Um, you could fit within or fit with a center crop. So only take the middle uh, output dimension. So in this case, only take the middle 416 by 416 pixels. We could do something like fit where we reflect the edges. You see how the edges get reflected here, or maybe with black edges in. So here the image aspect ratio is maintained to be constant, but the areas that are not square from the original image to the resize are filled with black padding. We could do the same thing with white padding and so on. Not to mention the different sizes that we might want to try out. I'll link in the description this blog post here of all the different ways that you might want to resize your images differently. Um, it's a blog post that I have written that walks through this discussion uh, in greater detail. But as a general rule, the key thing as it relates to resize is that the resize decision that you use for training is the same one that you use in production. Remember, all pre-processing steps apply to your training set, your validation set, and your testing set. I'm gonna say that again. Image pre-processing steps, because they're data cleaning steps, are going to apply not just to your training data set, but to your production data set which means you need to apply the same pre-processing steps that you did for model training that you do when you deploy your model. Now, I'm gonna resize my images to be square, which means they're all gonna be stretched to be this size. And I think that that looks good. So other pre-processing steps that I might want to apply. Auto-orient, so auto-orient means remove the EXIF data that's attached to my images. Again, there's a blog post here that walks through this in greater depth, but the too long didn't read is that EXIF data can control the orientation of how your model views your images relative to how they're stored on disk in memory. It's what makes images show up sometimes being 90 degrees rotated the wrong way. I'll apply this just to remove the EXIF data for my images. Some other steps that I might want to apply, I might want to grayscale my images, meaning all of my images get converted to be black and white. Or, for example, 
uh, I may want to tile my images to break them into smaller components if they're too big by themselves. I don't actually want to do that for the case of this data set, uh, but I'm going to do these three steps here. Now, um, there's a series of other steps that I might want to apply uh, to my data set based on the problem I'm working on. I don't want to use these for my problem here, so I'm just going to talk about them at a high level. Static crop means only take a portion of my image. Maybe you're working with security camera footage and you know that maybe the left side of the image is never going to have anything of interest. It's always going to be in the right side. So you static crop to just contain the right side of the image, which would look something like this for my chest data set. As I said, I'm not going to apply that. Maybe I want to adjust my contrast because maybe I'm working with documents and I'm doing OCR. And when I increase the contrast of those given documents, so my model's able to learn the edges more easily. Or maybe I want to modify my classes, which applies to my labels, or filter null, which means only keep my images in my data set that have a label. Now, I have uh, these preprocessing steps all applied, and I'm going to remove all of my augmentation steps. And I'll generate this data set version just so we can all see what this is doing to our images. So I'm going to apply this resize of 416 and grayscale and auto orient. So I'll generate this and I'll call it preprocess example. And from this, I'll have a versioned data set of a series of images that are all formatted the same way. And remember, this is going to apply to our training, validation, and testing sets. So every single image in our data set is going to be formatted correctly for our model to learn and use. So I can see my images here uh, after they've had these steps applied. And indeed, if we look at our images, we can see that in fact, the uh, uh, auto orient was applied. It was stretched 416 to 416. And we can clearly see that this model was, was grayscaled. So I can thumb through my images and kind of see that, yep, you know, uh, those steps were applied correctly. And in fact, those steps were also applied not just to the uh, training set, uh, but to the validation and testing sets as well. That's important because remember, pre-processing is like data cleaning. The steps that we applied to our training data is also needs to be applied to our validation set and also needs to be applied to our training set, to our testing set. Okay, um, that's it. That's kind of an overview of image pre-processing. I'll put links in the description to walk through those steps in greater detail, as well as why those steps matter. Note that RoboFlow makes pre-processing as easy as a click and also handles updating all the annotations accordingly. So if you like this content, uh, be sure to like and subscribe so we can make other educational videos on computer vision. Thanks.